Where are we, Lee? Are you rolling? Look. We're only at the power station. We're at the power station. This is incredibly exciting. All right, I'm going to text Ian and let him know we're here. This is good. Walk this way. Actually, it wasn't walk this way. It wasn't done, it was <laughs> Hi there. We're here to see Ian. Great. I should be expecting us. I was just texting you. Yes. Give him one second to give him a call. Marvellous, thank you very much. Warren. Oh. Hey, hey, how are you? It's good to meet you. Well, good to be met. <laughs> good to be met. So this is, uh, you know, we've completely renovated the building. Yep. Um, but we've, the, really the mission was to try to keep all the studios exactly as they were and kind of redo the infrastructure. So as you can see, Studio A is, is in its glory, as remains, and, and is, oh, is wow. as, it, as it has been since 1977. Wow. So, um, you know, we... Uh, Really, the renovation, the kind of main charge for us was to try to bring the building into, like, you know, be able to add modern technology, yeah. but to be able to keep it the classic recording studio that it was. So the focus for us was both restoring, like, the old vintage equipment and then also adding in video infrastructure, adding in, you know, uh, digital headphone systems, digital interconnectivity between rooms in case people Dante wanted to... Dante between yeah, all the rooms. Totally. In yeah. case somebody want, you know, in case people want to... And this happens a lot where people tie the rooms together or do really creative things with the well, my hands multiple are spaces. I know it's 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 hard to not come in this room and feel like you know the, the reverence for what was done here. We're going to see Omar Hakim this evening. That's incredible. So, so we'll be able to like tie all of this. Absolutely. So yeah. Omar, uh, I mean Omar's a legend, but yeah, incredible. The last time Omar was here, we were doing uh, he was doing a drum tracking session with his band, his group, um, and yeah, it was it was incredible. He was back in this room playing drums. It was pretty wild. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I've done so many episodes on records that were made here. Well, welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's huge. Yeah, this, this, this is like a, such a connectivity between the British bands that I love when they would come yeah. to America, that predominantly would come to New York as opposed to the West Coast. And yeah, so, many, so much stuff was done. Yeah, yeah. No, they, it's just, this room is really magical. It's, uh, you know, I think they, it was built by, you know, it was built by a group of engineers. So it was, you know, Tony Bon Jovi and Bob and Ed Stasium and all these people that were involved in this, this building yeah. of this place. You can tell that it was built by people that knew how to make records and knew how to make music. You know, that there's great sight lines, it sounds good, it's comfortable to record in here. It's, it's really, you know, they kind of got it right from the, from the get-go. Yeah. This morning we were at the bunker, which of course is also all pine. Yes, no, be. they, they, it's, uh, I mean, as you know, it's like this sort of place uh, and the ideas that, the, and the creativity of building this place, those ideas have gone all over the world. You know, you yeah. see studios with, the kind of pat the wood pattern that is here, or the, or the same sort of idea of kind of using absorption and, and reflection in a really unique way. Um, so yeah, you, you sort of see homages to this place kind of all over. Yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I love, yeah, you're right, with all the line of sight, all these rooms yep. can Yeah, no, together. Bob uh, was actually talking about that a lot. He was like, one of the things he was really pushing for, you know, he, he very admittedly was like, you know, Tony uh, Bon Jovi was really more the genius behind the acoustics of it, but he was like, what I really was pushing for was like sight lines to make sure that the, everybody could see each other. So what, what's a typical setup here? A uh, typical setup in A is, is can be anything and everything. So because this is our largest room, uh, yeah. we do a lot of large ensemble recording. So anything yeah. from like a big band to a 30-piece orchestra to for a film score to a Broadway cast album where you have 10 vocalists and a 12-piece band at the same time. Yeah. So anything and everything, and, and oftentimes it's flipping between, you know, we'll do like a two-day session and flip over, and then a one-day session and then flip over, and then a five-day, you know, it, it's sort of like, a, it's almost like a pit crew. It's a constant, you know, changing over of yeah. stuff in this room. Um, but, but drums are in here or in uh, here? So for like a standard Standard, like, like, well, kind of the classic rock setup in this room. Yeah. Um, it depends on the size of drum sound you want. Sure. So if you're looking for the big sort of power station, like live yeah. room drum sounds, usually the drums are right here. So right. a lot of uh, kind of the classic position is setting up the kit here, yeah. Yeah. playing into the room, and then using, uh, you know, a lot of great engineers like Roy Hendrickson or Bob or, or uh, you know, Neil Dorsman, they'll set up a ton of different room microphones in different positions, mm -hmm. kind of to capture a lot of the different stages of the reflections in the room. Amazing. It's super cool. One thing that's really popular is like you know U87s like up in the, into the into the eaves of the place. It was really cool. There's also uh, there's Mike Thailand's in the dome. I was wondering. So, about yeah, that, that, yeah, that's something that's really popular as well for drum tracking is having you know utilizing those tie lines as well. How do you get how do you get the mic up? <laughs> they're on a winch. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, they're on a winch that comes down. Yeah, so you don't have to like, get a ladder each time, which, which is which is helpful. <laughs> Eric, can you hang a mic? Yeah, yeah up exa there? exactly. So you get everybody to stand on each other's shoulders, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then then you get there. Um, but yeah, everybody has a different taste for how to configure the room and put it together. The interesting thing about this ISO, so they sort of labeled these ISOs originally what they wanted them to be used for. So this was yeah. called like the main live room. This was known as the piano ISO. And the yeah. reason for that is they wanted to create like a larger space for like a grand piano to play into. So they, they made this roof much higher and kind yeah. of like created the, 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 uh, the sort of tiered structure here or, the, or the, this roof structure. Um, but what's interesting is when people need to isolate the drums, this is a really popular spot to do it because right. of the high ceilings. Right. 
Oh yeah, piano back here. Another two piano. pianos back here. Yeah, here. so two pianos. We have a we're, we have a, a bunch of Yamaha C7s in the building, and then we also have a, a Steinway nine foot piano. So the session today is going to use the Steinway. Is it a piano session today? Yeah, it's a tango record, so it's going to be like an ensemble of about four people. I think it's bandonian and guitar, piano, and I think vocals. Gorgeous. This is the newest addition to the facility, so this piano uh, is, is, is new to us. Uh, at least uh, this came in in 2000 and uh, actually how, how 2020. How old is the piano itself? Not very. I think it's probably about 10 years old. It was very, um, this piano amazingly, I mean, was very generously donated to us. Um, oh, wow. So essentially it was a family that was a, uh, Part of uh, kind of the Berkeley, uh, greater Berkeley family, and they right. were moving out of a home, and and they, you know, it's really this amazing thing where you're, you're offered a free piano a lot of the time. So this happens all the time where people That's email. It's a decent sized home to have a nine foot yeah, stone. I, I think it was uh, it, it was not it was not understated, yes. um, and so they they called us and they were basically like, we have a free piano if you guys want an additional grand piano, and that we get those calls all the time. Yeah. And so usually what we do is we'll send our tuner to like check them out because sometimes when people want to give you a free piano. It's not a piano you, you necessarily want, or it's right. one that's going to take a lot of work into it. So we sent him to check it out. He played it, and he was like, this is an incredible instrument. And so yeah. we, we brought it in, and, and people love it. It gets requested all the time, especially for, for jazz or classical or, or stuff that utilizes beautiful, this kind of size. Beautiful. So, I'm, I'm, so we've got these two main kind of yep, ISO two main booths there. there. Um, there's a cable closet there, which people will use for like you know Basically. hiding a Leslie or a bass amp. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then we have two ISOs to the side of the control room. Um, because of the session today, we've kind of cleared this and put storage in here. But usually, what ends up happening is like the, you'll have a vocal in this room, or you yep. ha might have a guitar amp or something back there, or another vocalist. Yeah. And those booths have you know really good sight lines to the control room, so you can see you know if, if you have if you're doing just a single vocal session or you want the vocalist with the band, you can have yeah. like a really good sight line with the, with the engineer in this position. So, what was the console in here when you got when you took over the studio? This was it. This is it right here. So, so we, is this we left. The original, uh, original console? This is the second, the second console. So what there, year? there. This year is 1981. Was this console? Oh, okay. So there were um, basically this room has always had a Neve uh, of this sort of variety in it. Because there's a, the famous photo with Jack and John in yep. here. It would have been a Neve. That would have been the previous console. This so it would have right. been the 8068. And that so what's amazing. what's amazing with the 8068, the previous 8068, is it stayed in the family eventually. So the, yeah. that console is now. Now at Apogee Studios, Bob Claremont's studio at Apogee in Los Angeles. I so, saw that, but he didn't tell me. He didn't tell yeah, me that was the so console. So that console was the original console from this room. It went through several owners between, yeah. but he eventually got the console back. Um, this console ha was built for Power Station, and it went in in 1981, and has been in continual operation since. But it was. It went into this room. Is this the only room it's ever been in? Yep. This is the. It was built for Power Station, and it has not been installed in any other room. Wow. But it's basically, it's an 8088, so it's an 8068 with just eight additional channels. But the signal flow and the workflow is the exact same as an 68 Okay, so it's an 8088. Mm -hmm. Yep, and so it's just like, imagine like an 8068 and you just threw a sidecar of eight more channels on sure. it. Sure. And interestingly enough, the way it's built is pretty much the same. So if you look at the frame of the console, it literally is like an add, you know, like almost like an add-on, like yeah. a modular add-on to the console. Yeah. Well, I had an 8058, which is at the bunker. That's totally. my old that, console. That's a great console. Yeah, and um, that was a 24 that you could expand to 28. So the 68 was uh, 32. Mm -hmm. See, and so what's the difference between an 88 and a 78? So a 78 is not an inline console. So an 8078 uh, has a sidecar like jukebox for monitor mixing. I and so the 68 series, the 88 series, 58. These are this is like basically one of the very first inline consoles. So this right. has you know both your send into into yep. tape and then your return on the on the, yep. on, the on the monitor on the monitor pot. And so the 78. Very similar functionality, but it's separated. It's separated out. Yeah, I remember it had all these like mini. <laughs> yes, like, exactly. Fade of, yeah. Which people uh, sort yeah. of um, colloquially called the jukebox was what yes. people refer to that as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah, Absolutely. and so you know a lot of the same. Uh, well, really, most of the same gear has stayed in the facility, and so the kind of the patch bays are as they were refurbished, but the, they kind of laid out the way they would have been originally in this configuration. Uh, you know, these are pretty special. The facility too, which are the Poltex. So. Originally, in this room, they had 24 of these, and so they were basically across the 24 track. And so instead yeah. of patching them, they actually put a true bypass switch in. So you would basically be like, oh, I want a pull tech on the kick. You wouldn't patch it. You would just flip that in, and then it would put the pull tech in the channel. Um, what we've done or what's happened over the years is some have been sold or damaged or, or removed from the facility, but we do have at least, uh, we have like 10 to 12 in each room, and so they're sort of spread out through the facility, um, which is great. They're amazing sounding units. Um, I think some of the last ones built in like the original Pultec factory, like mm -hmm. before, like basically this is sort of the end of the, the sort of original Pultec era. So good.
Yeah, pretty Incredible. pretty wild. So one of the first sessions here was, was Chic and and Nile Rogers and uh, Bernard Edwards. With and Paul y- yeah, exactly. And and they were still building the studio. So one of the sessions we heard is that they were so anxious to get in here that the one of the first Chic sessions they've done, they're literally just they put plywood up instead of control room glass nice. because they, they were so anxious to get in the in the room and work. Um, but yeah, no, I mean Chic was kind of helped build this place. I mean yeah. because they you know initially started doing their records here and then when they became producers they brought in people like you know like David Bowie and Madonna and um, you know Steve Ray Vaughan I mean there's just there was so many musicians that came because of them Duran Duran I mean the yeah. you know the later the Power Station Supergroup was sort of formed out of the the, out of the, the yeah exactly yeah. and so like all of those right they were sort of became a production like supergroup so all those amazing bands came to yeah. this this place which was which was really cool um, but yeah I mean some of the records done in, in this particular I mean there's just been so many to, to, to even name but um you know the River Bruce Springsteen was probably one of the most you know most famous records done in this space, which is in I think '79 or late '70s in, yep. in this room. Um, and Bob Clearmount was saying that you know he sort of started that record, and then Neil Dorsman, who's an incredible engineer, took over for him, and 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 they they finished that record. And and it's you know that is. We we get a lot of you know Bruce Springsteen super fans that are just like when they come here they're just like oh my god it's like, like I can't believe I'm, I'm where that where that was going on but um, you know Cindy Lauper like uh, True Colors was done mm-hmm. in this space which is another amazing uh, Dire Straits Money for Nothing was done here yeah. which is like I mean just insane With Omar. yeah I'm a played on the record incredible drums incredible stuff yeah. like that and then you know all throughout the facility when, especially when they built B and C incredible records were done in that space as well and then you know later on also. Great records going into the into the uh, the future as well, like Bruner Mars and Orthodox Jukebox was done in this space uh, during the like Avatar days, and they um, they did the Joni uh, letters, the Herbie Hancock album as well, which is Beautiful. an amazing album. Beautiful, Beautiful sounding record done in the space, and then in like. On the total other end of the spectrum, you know, we've done like tons and tons of amazing film scores in the space as well, uh, and then also. Um, you know, tons of Broadway cast albums because of our proximity to, to Broadway. So the Hamilton original cast album was done in this space, uh, you know, Amazing. Dear Evan Hansen. So, like, it's sort of like, it keeps sort of touching the sort of cultural touchstone. Maybe you Hansen back here, yeah. Yeah. Some, some, some good old punk as well. Excellent. Yeah. Such a phenomenal. These, yes. were these original? They were. Uh, these are not the exact originals, but it is the same style of speakers. Are they Altex? What They're Altex 604s. So okay, these good. are the bi- known as Big Reds. Yeah. Um, so the original ones that were in here, we actually still have in storage, and they were... You know, the red coating over the years got worn off and started to peel off. And so at some point, I'm not exactly sure when, they decided, okay, it's looking a little scrappy. We can't afford another set of speakers. So they just painted over it with black. So for a while, they were big reds, but painted, you know, jet black, which looks cool. Um, But we, uh, Roy Hendrickson, again, who was uh, an incredible engineer who's been with the facility since 1985, he still, you know, works with us as... as, uh, Really, kind of our our our, um, our like uh, power station guru in a way, and he had uh, he actually sourced a pair of original 604s that were that were still red, and so we put them in kind of as an homage and sort of like a you know make it look like it would have been back in the day. Absolutely incredible. Which is super cool. So when people walk in, it's kind of like you know you walk through the renovation, and you're like, oh, I don't know where I am, but then they go in the studios, and it's like, okay, I'm. I'm it's just amazing. I'm home. That yeah. People used to track and mix on. This. No, I know it's it's really. Uh, <laughs> I remember when I was at Solito at the, at, at the plant there. They uh, are talking to the, uh, an engineer who made records there for like 40 years, and he's like, yeah, we never used to have near film monitors. We just used to be <laughs> yeah. blasted by Augsburgers or huge, yeah. And, it, uh, you know, we've had done a couple sessions, I think in like 2017, 2018, where Tony Bon Jovi, who was what, the first sort of engineer that came over to this, like help build this place, he came in and tracked a session. And, you know, his whole thing is like, you would basically put the 604s on and then take the monitor knob and just turn it all the way up. <coughs> and so just like, you know, super loud, super, you know, in your face. Yeah, yeah pretty wild. <laughs> Absolutely. Take your hair back, but you got some ATCs. We do. We do have ATCs. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the more modern, the more modern edition. Um, yeah. yeah. So we ATCs SCM twenty five A's are kind of the mains, uh, or sorry, the, the near fields for each room. So that's kind of the default pair that's in each space. And then we have you know NS tens and Proax and Genelex and other stuff as engineers need them or request them. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lovely. I, I don't want to leave the room, but I suppose we should. We should go and check, check out more. So how many uh, how many floors is it? So the whole building now is six floors, including the basement, like the cellar. Oh. Um, the fifth floor is another tenant, so it's not actually part of the studio. But the but we so we sort of occupy the basement up to the fourth floor. We're on the second floor now, which is Studio A and B, and then the other studios are on the fourth floor, which is uh, we have three studios on that floor. So G, uh, C, G, and E. Is there an F? There's no F. So uh, <laughs> G started its life as Studio D, yeah. But they renamed it when they put a G series console in it. 
Uh, so it's, it's an homage to the console that's in the room. Was that the room that Bob used to mix in? No, Bob used to mix in B. So in B, B was kind of his okay. uh, his space. So he mixed in that space uh, with an with an original the original SSL that was in there. Jack Jack told me, and, and Bob Bob couldn't corroborate the story. But <laughs> Jack told me that they were doing the river, and Jack I don't know what he was in. He was in doing an Aerosmith record, I think, and, and, and probably that one. The last one he did with them before he got back together with them in the 90s. I'm blanking mm. on the name of the record. And he said that uh, Bob started mixing, like, like, came in and said, Hey guys, I can help you guys out. Why don't you just <laughs> hand me the stuff? I'll start mixing. And as far as Jack is concerned, he's like, Bob is to blame. He said, He's the one, <laughs> he's the one that started the external mixer. Yeah, know? oh, right. To actually have somebody yeah, separate somebody the. While yeah, you're tracking to, right, to have a different mixing. person be able to come in and do this. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is Studio C. Uh, this is probably our, our I mean, all, all the rooms are classic, but this room is, is also an incredible tracking space that's in the facility. They built this in around 1980. So this is the third room that they built, that they built in the facility. Um, this was originally uh, an actual like power station building, and then it became a TV studio. So it was a big industrial building, and uh, so they built A first, but then they kind of like as they had more demand, they built B, and then they built C. So they kind of built them in chronological order as they had more demand to to keep tracking, and as the place got more more famous and more booked. Um, so this console was the I think is probably the second or third one in the room, which is a Neve VRP uh, seventy two channel. So this went in in, in a, around 1990 is when this went in. Have you got a string day today? We don't. So this is uh, this is Dashiell who's who works with us, and he is breaking down from uh, a big band session yesterday. So yesterday, which finished pretty late last night. Um, so uh, this was uh, Tracy Yang, who's like a jazz artist, had like a, a, a very large jazz ensemble. So the room was just packed with, with people yesterday. So Amazing. we're sort of uh, breaking down from that session. Um, and then next, you know, m Monday will be the next session in the room. So kind of breaking down and getting ready for the for the week. Amazing. Poltex. Poltex, so more Another Poltex. Ten. Yeah, exactly. So, so you know, no, no shortage of Poltex. Um, these are exactly the same design as the one downstairs. This is a combination of both EQP1As and MEQ, uh, MEQs. And so same design. So you see there's like on all the, M on all the EQP1As still has that, still, that true bypass switch. So these would have been across a tape machine at some point in their life. Incredible. Um, this room, uh, you know, really was uh, pretty seminal as far as records being made as well. So this is like when Omar tracked uh, Let's Dance, like this yeah. is the room that Let's Dance was done in. Oh. Uh, this is the drums for the, for like like a virgin, the drums for that were done in the space as well, Madonna. So, uh, you know, Jason Cassaro, the great, uh, Jason, Jason Cassaro, who was a staff engineer here as well. And so this room is also incredibly famous drum sound wise. Um, the story that I heard about this room, which I don't know if it's true, but basically like they were kind of not finished it. Like they had kind of like built it to a point and got mm -hmm. it to like, you know, where they thought, okay, it's pretty good. And then they were like, it's good enough to do some records. And then we'll do a couple recordings in here, see how we feel about it. And then we'll tweak the acoustics if we feel like it's, it's rough. But the story I heard is that they did that and then they made a bunch of hit records in the room. So then they were like, don't touch it. <laughs> so, oh, okay. so it's kind of, it, it, uh, I mean, it's obviously it's finished in aesthetically, but I think that the, they kind of like, they kind of just, you know, in a, I know they did a lot of experimentation for like getting it to be what it was, I think the plan was to do similar in this room. But then once they tracked it, they're like, okay, no, just leave it, leave it as, leave it as it is. But it's a really great sounding nice. drum room as well. Um, and yeah, it's it's this room uh, is pretty flexible too, which is great. There's a lot of iso, ISO booths, so you can kind of divide the room into multiple spaces, which makes it really cool for something like a big band or for something where you have to have like great sight lines, but then a lot of isolation between people. Incredible, incredible. Let's get some photos. This console probably requires the most amount of maintenance of any of our, <laughs> any of our consoles. Oh yeah, they, 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 yeah, you can fry eggs on these things. Yeah, so hot. Yeah, they, they 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 bake themselves to death. Yeah, they have. Uh, I don't know if it's. I think it's the same. At the village. Yeah, and, yeah they have. Uh, uh, well, the village I think is the. They have upgraded to the 88RS, which is basically the same idea, just a newer yeah. the newer version. Yeah, it's just not. No, it doesn't run as hot. They, the, the one in the palms. I don't know if they still have that. It was just like you put your oh, hand just about radiating this heat off radiating of it. Yeah. Heat. But you can still feel it. Lee, put your hand on it. Just put your hand here. Oh. Yeah, just, just across the any of the any of the and, modules. Any, anywhere anywhere, just put your hand hand there. Oh yeah. That's actually <laughs> not as bad as they can get. Yeah. Sometimes they get much, much worse. And so what ends up happening is you end up frying the components. So you just have to keep rebuilding yeah. them. But you remember the one in the village is like you get that close to it. <laughs> oh no, you can do it. Yeah, you can feel the heat here. <laughs> We'll make some s'mores on there sometimes as well. <laughs> yeah. The 604s again. Oh, also yeah. Oh, it says la lounge back here. 604, yeah, the lounge really, I mean, hasn't changed much since it opened. We still have the glass blocks and, you know, the, the original configuration of the lounge. Wow. 
Which is nice, so you get to see the city. Yeah, you get some you, know, you get some yeah. windows. You know, one of the things we did in the renovation, which was really nice, was we opened a lot of the windows back up because uh, yeah. a lot of them had been either blocked in and you know covered over the years, and so we we got we tried to get a bunch of natural light back in the building. Yeah, that's lovely. Imagine being in here with uh, when a let's dance is being. Tried. I can only imagine. I, I yeah. often think like I'm like I would love to spend a week here in 1979, just like being, a, a, huge fly, being a fly fan. on the wall. Yeah, I'm a huge, huge Bowie fan. It's like a, they that, did well. A as well was uh, Scary Monsters was done here as well. I mean, Scary it's Monsters crazy. Is one of my favorite yeah, it's ones, it's yeah. there's some really amazing pictures from that era. Uh, this is Mark and Dash. Hey, Mark, how are you? Mark is uh, nice one meet. of our technicians. Dash is actually one of our technical interns uh, that is here. Hey, Dash. Um, and yeah, like I said, we're breaking down from a session yesterday. Do you have uh, any schools that you get to interns from? It's a joke. Um, we have, we, we, well, <laughs> you know, it's funny. People ask that question. We, our, our staff is kind of from all over, though. So we, yeah. it's not just Berkeley. You know, it's so like 99.9% yeah. Berkeley. But we do occasionally. I think things. we're like 50-50 at this point, actually. We're, we're, yeah. we're good. We're, we're, we've, got a lot, we've, got a, we've got a diverse basis of education coming to 50% Berkeley and 50% every other school yes, combined. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Um, so no, yeah, just, no, totally. But this, <laughs> this, uh, that, that's uh, absolutely deserved ribbing. No, no, no. Um, the, uh, just, hey, it's, it's it's a good thing. The uh, so yeah, this space again, um, you know, big open You're acoustic live. It's a great opportunity. Yes, yeah, totally. So yeah, big open, you know, big open space live room. Great, you know, amazing drum sounds in the space as well. Uh, a lot of horns and big band sessions in here as well. Um, yesterday there was, I think it was like a 64 input session, so you can just see the amount of cables and stuff being put away from the from the from the yeah. chaos. You have your 604s. We do, and those are those are homemade. Yeah. So these uh, these are are you know they use Mastering Lab crossovers and the original drivers, yeah. but rather than buying the cabinets, they just made them in house. So these are homemade. These are homemade 604s. Lovely. That's amazing. Um, this room uh, is called the, effectually called the Motown ISO. So you can see that they have uh, sort of the corkboard floor, like the corkboard walls and the, yeah. the old school tile. And so this was kind of built, uh, you know, Tony Bon Jovi got his. It's a sound when you walk in there. Definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. Much different, much different vibe than the rest of the building. Um, so this was, Tony Bon Jovi was uh, an engineer at Motown, was how he got his start. And so he sort of built this room as kind of an huh. homage to that. But it's cool. But it's nice, you know, for a different, you know, tighter drum sound or different, different sound. And if anybody's wondering, yes, it is John Bon Jovi, Jovi's uncle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and did all the original recordings, didn't he? And the run, Runaway was Runaway done here. Yeah, I think yeah. Runaway was done here when he was like interning. Yeah. Like, I think he was doing yeah. it in off hours while he was yeah. like while he was, uh, you know, while he was sweeping, was sweeping the floors. Finger. Yeah. And it's uh, it's t it's Tim Pierce playing guitar on it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not even. Uh, it's before Richie. Yeah. 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 No, it's pretty pretty wild. This is a beautiful room. Yeah, this uh, I I mean A is incredible. I would have to say this is this is I mean not to play favorites, but I, I do love this room a lot. It's a really fun place to make a record. It feels like a ship. Yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah, yeah it, it I feels think, like we're inside a galley. It, it totally, you know, yeah. I think what it, like the angles of the of, it feels. Yeah, yeah. definitely get the boat vibe and yeah. and the yeah the for sure. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And what I love about new, classic New York studios is just kind of everything's like built <laughs> it's up be built on top up. of each other. <laughs> it's not like you walk in and there's all these rooms breaking off. No, it's so it is so funny you say that because like when people come in from Los Angeles, we're like Studio C is on the fourth floor. They're like the fourth floor. Yeah. What do you mean? There's multiple floors. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, but it feels like you're all completely in isolation. You're working on your own floor in your own yeah. studio. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's 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 got a nice. Uh, it feels like nicely private from the other spaces, which is which is good. Absolutely gorgeous. So is there any other rooms we can look in? Yeah, let's go to G. Let's go to G. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, if you will. Good to meet you. Thank you. Do, 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 we just have do, tape machines do, everywhere do, as well, which is pretty do, fun. Do, do, do. So this is uh, Studio G. This, it was affectionately named that way because of the console. Right. Uh, this is a G series, SSL G series. Um, this room started its life as Studio D, like in yeah. Power Station days, and they built it kind of like as a post-production room, so that it had like a projection screen in it. And uh, I think the original console here was like a SSL uh, Axiom, which was like the digital, digital console that they were trying to push, I think, in the 90s. Um, and right. they, um, so this, uh, this space got redone actually by Roy Hendrickson and the one of the original carpenters that was here is kind of Vinny in the early 2000s. They kind of uh, wanted New to New York carpenter called Vinny. How yeah, unusual! I mean, 
<laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so out of character. Yeah. And so they built, uh, they basically redid the room to try to make it more like the uh, original studio, the other studios. And so this became super popular. In the early 2000s, uh, Rich Costi took up like residence in this space. Oh. And so mixed like, you know, Mars Volta, Franz Ferdinand, like all sorts mm -hmm. of great records in this in this room. Nowadays it gets used for a lot of different things for us. So we do, you know, everything from like overdub sessions in here, you know, mix sessions. We do uh, film score mixes in here. Like we'll do like, which is with the large screen, being able to do like 5-1 or 7-1 mixes in here as well. Wonderful. So yeah, this, this room kind of helps us as our sort of mix and overdub space. Incredible. Yeah. Super cool. No Sweet. Problem, thank you. Have a marvelous day. Um, so we do still have tape machines in the facility, which I was is gonna uh, yeah. Tape. This is just a uh, being a bit of a parking lot for them right now. But uh, these are you know the eight hundreds. They've been in here since the since the nineteen eighties. Um, and yeah, pretty rare that people are requesting tape, but it, it does happen every now and again. Marvelous. Yeah. Uh, any other spaces we can see? Let me see if somebody is in E, which is the small little atmosphere room we have. Oh, amazing. So this is kind of a newer, newer redo uh, to the facility. So this is E. This is always this actually. This room started its its uh, history as Nile Rodgers' guitar locker. So like when right. they were in C, this was actually a storage closet for like all of his guitars that he would keep here. Lovely. Um, but they in the '90s they turned it into like a, an editing suite, and they you know had one of the first Pro Tools working in the facility was in this room uh, to right. do editing and that kind of stuff. And so now it's kind of, for us it's a bit of a, it's kind of like our, a bit of a test kitchen for us. So this is where we've been kind of dabbling into doing Atmos and doing surround like different surround formats. It's okay. kind of nice to have a like obviously the rooms are so classic you don't want to kind of mess around with them too much. Sure. So it's nice to have a space where you can kind of experiment and and try new stuff out. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think, let's see what's going on in the, in the theater downstairs as well. So we added a black box theater to the basement of this facility as well. Wow, what was There's, in there before? It was a storage uh, locker. So there was three things down in the basement. There was a wood shop. So they, they actually literally had like a wood shop in the building, which is where they built the building out of. Um, which is wild, like a full, you know, full they, carpenter shop down there. Do they own the building? Um, it's now owned, yeah, but okay, it's, it's, it's now, it's well, it was owned, I mean, basically a lot of the way this building was able to survive um, its many incarnations was that it was all, the people that operated always did have ownership of the building. Good, good. Um, the relationship now is, is a, like a partnership between like a philanthropic, the, actually the person who made this possible for Rickley was a gentleman named Pete Muller. Um, who's uh, basically gave a large gift to the college to make this this possible to happen? So the the ownership of the building now is a bit of a partnership between between multiple multiple entities: Berkeley, the city of New York, and, and this gentleman. Great, great, great. Yeah, you have to preserve it. Yep. So this uh, was a new space added to the building. So. Both for the educational programs, but also for like performance space, we wanted to have a space you could have a performance in and be able to have tie lines up to the studios uh, in addition to the studios. So this is the black box theater space that was put in the building. Wow, that's wonderful. And so this. And you've got it. Looks like you've got it as an Atmos as well. Uh, it's yes, it's spatial. It's a spatial setup with um, with DNB like uh, Audio Technic speakers. Oh, with DNB speakers. Mm -hmm. I love DNB. Probably the best. Yeah, I mean, especially for an application like this with small point sources, there, there's really my, nothing my, better. My friend Matt Butcher is an incredible front of house, does gorillas blur, everybody. Always just swears by DB, says it's the best out there. And they, I, I actually, one of their uh, engineers uh, is a friend of mine, German, obviously, I mean, smarter than smart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this the really the challenging part of this was building a space that then could be acoustically isolated from the upstairs. So this, uh, you know, we're directly below A and B right now. Oh, and okay. And so a lot of the thought process to building this space was to try to create it as isolated as possible. So this yeah. whole this whole uh, theater is floated, um, like you would do in modern studio design, with the intention of just like isolating it from the upstairs. So we can do a pretty substantially loud concert in here without disturbing upstairs, which is cool. Amazing. Love it. And do you do you rent this out or you just use it predominantly so for a lot of it is stuff? for the educational side, but we do commercial bookings in here as well. So we've done, you know, we do absolutely rent it out. Um, we've done, you know, this we've done a great kind of showcase. At, at yeah, place. totally. And we've done, um, you know, we have a full video complement of stuff in here as well. So it, it's uh, definitely been used a lot for doing, um, you know, doing live streams or concert capturing of concerts. And yeah, it's pretty nice. Lovely. Um, and then the last space I'll show you is, is kind of where the video infrastructure of the whole facility comes down into. One of the things we really added to the facility was adding wow. in uh, video capability. And so we added in a video control room. And so this space, actually, all the studios can and, and the Black Box Theater can patch video into this location. And what so you're this, saying, you've been watching us here. That's right, the whole time we've been watching. No, uh, <laughs> only, only when wanted or, or needed. But basically, this is kind of a, a video remote truck kind of parked in the building at all times. 
And so we've done a lot of really great uh, things where people want to take B-roll of their session, where they have like you know they want to be able to capture angles and, and cameras without being in, in, you know, an intrusive. Um, we do live streams, obviously, from the theater all the time. And so this is a you know kind of a nice addition to the facility to add some value for what we're able to do. All these lockers here. Yeah, so we have uh, we have full time students here on a regular basis. So uh, there's a there's a master's program in creative media and technology that runs at the same time. Yes. Yeah, so this uh, this staircase that we're about. To... It's the it's the guitar sound for Tattoo Youth. Bob was telling me it's uh, just that sound that that reverb is. The yeah. Well. So this uh, this you can already hear it when we're in here. <laughs> This staircase was the was the echo chamber that they, they used for all those records. Oh yeah, now you talk. Can you get this on our little mic, hopefully? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to be Keith Richards? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this was chamber one for many years in the facility, which was the the echo chamber that they used on many albums, and there was a chamber in the in the basement as well which was like an old bathroom as well that they used. Um, but previously it basically had, same thing as like you saw in C, the sort of uh, homemade Altec 604s. Yeah. They had two of those like mounted kind of like two thirds and, and a one third up the staircase. And then you they had- put them back in? I think so, yeah. We have, we saved them, yeah. And then uh, they had a pair of, uh, yeah, like 451s and they were just uh, like an XY in the middle of the staircase. And that was the sound of the, that was the sound of the chamber. Amazing, amazing. And then, you know, when we were in Berlin at Hansa Studios, they had the same thing. They had the stairwell and they'd mic it up and, yeah. It's pretty cool. It the same, you know, same thing, a building with multiple levels. Yeah. This uh, used to be our tech shop, but now is like a gallery space. And the, the cool thing about this is that we can, um, one, it's just a nice open, big open space with windows, but it also, like, when we have larger sessions, can kind of serve as, as a larger, like, lounge area as well. Beautiful. This painting, I only turn it on to get the full effect. Turn it on. There's <laughs> Bruce, Niles, Sting. So this uh, incredible thing, a piece of amazing yeah. art, was uh, created by an artist oh, named cool. uh, Michael Glass. And so Michael worked Glass. with, uh, that's Roy Hendrickson in the video there as well. Yeah. Uh, so worked with, um, worked with Steven Weber to kind of come up with a piece that would be an homage to the history of the building. And so this is like a so commissioned piece for this. Nick and so, Dylan, yeah, kind of like all, many of the famous artists that worked here. So Herbie Hancock's hidden in there somewhere. That sister sledge up on the top. Oh, yeah. And then the top portion with oh. the video monitor is like all of the Barry artists that, that, that had passed and away. Freddie, yeah. yeah. But a really incredible piece of, uh, piece of art. Yeah, it's wonderful. Michael's a, an amazing artist, so he does portrait work like this, but he also does all this great sculpture, and so the, the frame was all, was all was done by him as well. Oh, I love that. Niles' uh, strat. Yeah, it has lights on it. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Yeah, it's incredible. With all the angels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cherubs. Cherubs. The cherubs. Yeah. And so this is a rotating uh, like loop, and so we've recorded many engineer, famous engineers that have worked here over the years. Uh, so Bob is in this loop, Elliot Shiner is in it, Todd Whitelaw, like just amazing people that have worked here, as well as some of our staff as well. So it just kind of keeps going for hours and hours. Love it, and another sunlight. Get to sunlight <laughs> and get to see what's going on out in the city. Yeah, this was uh, actually the, the back of the freight elevator originally. So this, this got cleared open and, and opened up to the, the light, which is really, really nice. Amazing. What about these amps? These amps, um, so basically this space eventually will have like kind of exhibits in it is the idea, but for now, you know, storage is always challenging in New York City, so we were so like, do, we, do we these kept, have stories? Uh, the amps don't necessarily, other than they've been used on many, many records. So this is a, a Mesa Mark One that's probably been here for at least 30 years, and then Roland Jazz Choruses, we have and a bunch not, of other Fender amps. No, I was yeah. just plugging into the console. Yeah, it? no, in fact, uh, in Studio C, yeah. we still have DIs on the side of the console that they built in like directly for him to play into. Oh, there's, there's Bob on the, on the mural now. Bob! <laughs> Getting a sound up on the console. Saw him a couple of days ago, of course, at AES. Yep. <laughs> Amazing. He's the man. Oh yeah, such a nice guy. Yeah, lovely guy and probably the greatest mixer that ever lived that yeah. doesn't think he is. Right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, very humble. I mean, we, I would say Woman in Chains is considered to be, uh, I don't know, maybe the greatest mix ever <laughs> by yeah. so many people I admire. No, he's incredible.
So this, uh, one of the most amazing records done in this room is Scary Monsters by David Bowie. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's, there's pictures actually of Bowie like standing in the control room, like next to that same piece of furniture. <laughs> Uh, making the record in here. So yeah, that, that was the, the first Bowie album that was here, but before Let's Dance, but yeah. I'm thinking of like fashion. I'm wondering if that guitar sound, was Bob the first one of, when, when, did, when did Bob mic the stairwell? Um, the stairwell was done really early. So I think probably late, oh. late 70s yeah, was when they started okay, using that. Okay, so, cause you think of that Fripp guitar sound, that yeah. and it's just got that, kind of a really close verb on it. I mean, that might also be, so one of Bob's favorites as well was yeah. the, there was a bathroom that was in the basement as well. Um, and you, it was that, a there was a tiled bathroom. And it's a little tight to some So it might be that. So I know yeah. Bob really loved that as well. So, yeah. so there's a lot of records, especially like on vocals or stuff where he would yeah. use that chamber too. Yeah. I mean, I still listen to that guitar sound and have no idea, I know. but I do know there's credits of a guitar, an early guitar synth in there. Hmm. So it might be Fripp with yeah. a guitar synth with that, with that bathroom verb. Yeah, incredible. It's just such an incredible guitar sound. And even I was, wasn't playing guitar, I just knew this was some alien sound. Yeah, so cool. How did they create it? Yeah, it's pretty otherworldly. And ashes to ashes on that. Still sounds like yeah. it was recorded yesterday. I mean, yeah. Another, another planet that guy was from. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Yes. <laughs> incredible. Wow. Well, thanks, Ian. Thanks of ever so course, much for yeah, taking us so around. Of course, yeah. So glad we had to do this. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Yeah, really yeah. appreciate it. Of course. Really appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, everyone. Of course, there will be a link to the studio and everything down below, so you can go and check out some more information. We'll have a blog with some of the history in it. And uh, thank you. So long. Farewell. Happy <laughs> to say au revoir. Adios. Ciao. Tschüss. Goodbye.